Hello and welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast where we talk all about interiors with interviews with interior stylists, writers and the fabulous homeware brands that make a house a home. I also catch up with industry experts in the know and get them to share all their knowledge and advice. There's so much to talk about. I'm your host Emma Morton Turner, an interior stylist and writer with a ton of experience. I set up InsideStylist.com so I can share all that interiors love with you. So don't forget to head on over to the website for not only the show notes from today's episode, but regular interior blog posts and a whole host of inspiration on the interior stylists and writers profiles. But for now, enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of solo podcasts I'm going to be doing called 10 in 10. I really like doing solo episodes, but sometimes you just want something short and snappy, and some of my interviews have got quite long, so I thought I might shake things up a little bit. So the 10 in 10 are going to be top 10 lists, similar to how I did the Pinterest episode, where it was 10 ways to grow your audience sort of thing. Um, Today's is going to be about email. I've got lots of different things lined up, but if anyone has anything they're interested in hearing about or would like me to research and, and talk about to do with styling, writing, business, whatever, please do drop me a line. I'd love to hear what you guys are interested in hearing about. Um, I am going to do a timer as well so that if it beeps, you hear it beep and I'm just going to stop where I am because everyone who knows me and has been listening probably knows I can talk quite a lot. So I'm going to start the timer now, 10 minute countdown going, and I'm going to talk about email. Now, Basically, this has come about because after Easter, I thought I'd have loads of time off over Easter. And actually, I worked every, well, not every day, but practically every day. I'm very lucky that my teens have um, quite sociable lives and they can go off and do their own thing. But um, in general, I was at my um, kitchen table while they were milling around and email just got quite overwhelming. It was really hard to keep on top of things. And if anyone's a mum, they go back to work after the Easter holidays and you have to catch up with everything you haven't quite finished. And email just keeps coming, doesn't it? It's like I get about 100 to 150 a day, mainly from PRs. And I thought, I'm not on my own here. I have been um, trying to get on top of it, but it's quite a stressful thing. I, I always want to get it down to inbox zero. And I started asking people how they deal with it, kind of researching the background of this podcast. How do people actually get down or get through their emails? And I spoke to stylists, I spoke to writers, PRs, editors, lots of, basically anyone I came into contact with, I asked my husband. That was quite interesting. Um, Actually, he had a few good tips, but he was very much business manager sort of um, looking at it, not creative. I'm not sitting at my desk all the time, even though he doesn't sit at his desk all the time either. Anyway, so I'm just going to run through some of the things that have come up. Some of it are apps, some of it are uh, kind of like routines and how other people deal with email and keep on top of it. So number one, I work on Google Mail because I can access it from everywhere and it's super easy to use. And I have folders set up on my email. And mainly it's because my email is all work. There's a lot of different things that come in. I have a lot of, um, you know, I might have a, a folder for tiles. I might have one for sofas. Actually, I have furniture and then that's broken down into other sections. So it might be armchairs, sofas, dining, kitchen tables, that sort of thing. And an example of why this works so well for me is someone in the Facebook group this morning asked for outdoor tiles. And I literally had an email the day before. So I went into my tile folder and I just forwarded her three or four emails with different PR contacts that she might be um, might be useful for her feature. And knowing that all of my emails have just been blocked into that or my emails have just been put into that folder is really reassuring that if a feature suddenly comes up, I literally can just go and get all that information and have the PR contacts handy. I do use my um, email as a search tool for contacts but I also have all my contacts in my email as well. So that is quite interesting how I keep hold of things. It's quite good to have it as a a very organized setup. That was number two was for searching for contacts there. I didn't say that. I also, I pay for extra storage on my Gmail. It's something like £1.59 a month, but it gives me mega gigabytes so that I can just literally open an email and leave it sitting in my inbox kind of opened so if it doesn't fit into a folder exactly but I might later on down the road want an Easter hamper and I haven't got an Easter folder then I can find it so number one create folders number two use it as a search engine but buy extra storage if you need to 
Number three is filters. So if you go into settings on Gmail, I'm sure it's the same on Outlook and other places, but if you go into settings, you can create filters. So if emails come through from certain people that you don't necessarily need to open, but want to keep for future reference, that email will automatically go into a folder. You don't even have to touch it. It could be an email address. It could be a keyword, anything like that. It's like it doesn't even have to hit your visual scope. It's gone. Number four is probably super, super obvious, but delete and unsubscribe. I think it's really easy to to get emails set up, like you might want to sign up to get a free download. And then all of a sudden, you've, you've gone from having very few subscriptions to having 20. And also, when you delete, they're quite clever. There's two step um, unsubscribing now. So if you just push unsubscribe, you do have to go in and actually push that, I don't want these anymore, no further emails, or you have to go and sign into that that email, that website and unsubscribe in your preferences. And they're quite clever in that, that you might think, oh, I'll just click unsubscribe and it's gone. It's not. You have to go in and do it in quite a lot of um, steps, which when you're trying to just quickly unsubscribe, it's a bit annoying. But I've been spending this week or the last two weeks unsubscribing to anything I don't want to keep seeing. And there's been a few things that have popped up again because it's like I haven't gone through the process thoroughly enough because it's or it might just be that I can't remember my passwords. How annoying is that? That is when filters are great. You just put that filter into do not need to read and it will just disappear and you don't see it again if it's being a bit of a problem or mock it as spam. I've done that a few times as well. Um, Number five, have your notifications set up so that you can read it. It's like a reading window. You can extract and the size of the window where you can read it. So rather than it just having the subject, it's the subject plus the first two sentences. And you get a good idea whether you need to open that, whether you can just send it to a folder, how you, um, how you need to access it and use it. Another pretty obvious one, number six, is turn off your notifications. I hate my, my little pings coming up when I'm working. I really need that to just be completely gone. It drives me mad. That brings me on to Boomerang. I recently set up kind of an app on my email called Boomerang. I will share the link in the show notes for this. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, I have ADHD. I think I've spoken about that quite a bit on the podcast. And little distractions will completely throw me off task. It's that kind of thing where you go upstairs to get the washing and you come down with a new book or something and you've completely forgotten about the washing. So every time an email pings up or... Even just knowing email is sitting there, it's like, oh, I'll just check and see if that person has come back to me while I'm writing this feature. Oh, I'll just have a look over there. With Boomerang, you can pause your inbox. So you literally just click a button and say pause, and then a little out of office will pop up and it'll say, hi, I've paused my inbox. If you need to get in touch with me, find another method, meaning if you need me and you know me well enough, you can phone or text or something. Otherwise, you're just going to have to wait. And you can set it up to unpause after a certain amount of time, or you can just have it as a a manual thing. But that has been brilliant because then it's like, because it's paused, I don't even look and I can really get on with stuff and really focus. The other thing about Boomerang is I can set up emails to go out at a specific time. So when I do a podcast, I would like to send an email out to the person whose podcast it is and say, hi, just letting you know that your podcast has gone live. Well, if that goes live on a Friday and I'm shooting, I might not have the time to sit down and, and go into my drafts and, and send it. With Boomerang, I can schedule it to go out whenever I want. There are loads of other um, brilliant factors from Boomerang, but I haven't actually accessed any more than that. I've just done those. Number eight, my husband says he flags stuff up to come back to. Now, I just mark things as unread, but actually that's not really working because then I have to remember to go in and and read them and I can quite easily ignore them. But that that really works for him. I talked about inbox zero. Number nine is getting to inbox zero. Is it really essential? Do we really need to be at inbox zero? I'm thinking not. I'm kind of forgetting that it will ever happen. I do not need to be at inbox zero. I'm giving you all permission to. And number 10 is, I don't know if you would call this um, an email thing. I'm going to give you an an extra. I'm going to give you a number 11. I've I've only got one minute and 48 seconds left, so I think I'm doing all right. So 1Password is another app that I use. Um, I use this across all my devices, and it saves all my passwords. So I have one one password to remember to get into 1Password. And then it will, as I log into different websites and things... I can save it into my one password app. 
And that is really good for when you need to sign into anything. So if you clear your cash on a web on your Mac laptop or whatever, you have to then start re-signing in everything. The one password app will remember it and fill it automatically for you. And I've been using that with my email and that has been brilliant. Okay, that's 10. I've got one minute left. So I'm going to give you one little tip. And that is, I was listening to a podcast the other day and he was talking about how you can export your Google contacts into a sheet. Now that's something I have thought, of course you can, but it wasn't on my radar. And I thought I'm going to share it with you guys because if for any reason something went down or you couldn't access your emails or even just sometimes it's nice to have a printout, it's really good to go in and and export them onto a hard drive and have a little copy of them somewhere. Anyway, I have 32 seconds left. So I hope this was useful. It's a bit, um, yeah, it's a little bit ADD actually. But anyway, I hope it's been useful. And um, if you have any tips, I would love to hear how you deal with emails. If there's anything you think would benefit other people, let me know because I will share it over on Instagram and Facebook and in the comments on the show notes. Also check out the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast app on iPhone. If you scroll down, the links will be in the show notes on your phone. So you can see everything there. And any second now, the time is going to go. Okay, well, that's 10 minutes. Hope it was useful and I will catch you all soon. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Inside Stylist podcast. You'll find all the details from today's show over on the show notes at insidestylist.com. If you enjoy the show, I'd love it if you would head on over to iTunes and rate and review it. It's the best way to help other people find the show and I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, bye for now.